very first street performing experience. Uh, my friend and I were juggling fruit. We didn't even have juggling equipment. We juggled fruit. And the line was, I was born hungry and I'll die hungry, but it feels so good to fill up in between. Hi, I'm Avner Eisenberg. I do a one-man show called Avner the Eccentric. I have a little garden at home. I'm a hypnotherapist. I do a lot of things. The word clown has been used a lot in conjunction with this workshop. And in fact, I used to call it clowning workshop. And I started to understand that in, in a very real sense, clown is a four-letter word. It comes with a lot of baggage. Having said that, I started calling this eccentric performing. Uh, I like the word a lot. Oh, I'm sorry I called myself Avner the Eccentric a long time ago, because it's like being Wingdini or the Magician or something, but, but there it is. I started juggling at about age 12, uh, actually taught by Hovey Burgess, who was a college student at Florida State University. And they had a day camp program at a resort in central Georgia that my family went to. But I went off to college as an honors chemistry and biology major and I got caught in a thunderstorm and went into the nearest building, which happened to be the theater, and they were having auditions for a play and I got a part and I drifted into being a theater major. After going to four colleges in a counterclockwise direction, uh, I had gotten interested in mime, went off to Paris to study with Lecoq. I came back from Lecoq's in 1974 and I gave myself five years to make a living at it or I would go back to my other plan and, and go back to medical school or something. And after about three years I woke up one day and realized that I was making a living and I just never went back. I never looked back. I just want to ask you some questions, okay? okay. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you from? I was born in Webster, Texas. Do you remember your room? Yeah. How old were you? Like five. Okay. Do you guys notice anything? It's been a steady progression. I've never felt any pressure. I've had some very lucky breaks, some, some things that just came together at the right time, like being cast in Jewel of the Nile. I believe I was the first solo clown to ever play on Broadway. And these were big big moments for me. I remember standing backstage at opening night on Broadway and there were lots of movie stars and all the New York press and starting to talk myself into getting worried and then going, wait a minute, my character has to be naive. And, and I, I, I just let go of all that, went out and did the show and uh, got good reviews and ran for almost a year. What I want you to do is watch Ember's eyes. <laughs> when she is searching for an image of a memory, something happens. Now it may take a while because she'll be self-conscious about it now. But, <laughs> but so what, tell me about the house. Um, it was a small house. Uh -huh. uh, do you remember your bedspread? Uh, you guys see it? <laughs> there you go. Is she where does she, where does she keep her I'm right looking at my brain. Right up here. <laughs> this is something that came from my study of Ericksonian hypnosis. And it's not a way of hypnotizing someone. It's a way of understanding how people sort through their experience. And what she's doing is called a trans-derivational search. Inspiration comes from, 
from real life activities and it's a distillation and a magnification uh, and a making more a, a sort of precision approach to looking at just everyday accidents. Let's have another example. Someone else want to want to come up? Not wolf those eyes, are you? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what do you juggle? I juggle clubs. Where? Balls, rings. Uh, where? Uh, where? Yeah. Where's your, what's your typical? There you go. Did you see that? Yeah, he did it. Yeah. Is it always to the left? or is No, it no. Everyone's right wired in their own unique way. But once you figure out how they're wired, they tend to be very consistent. This is how you start to understand what the audience is doing that to understand anything that anyone says to you in terms of language, you have to go into your own personal experience. I think my show is very much based on balance. One title of it is Exceptions to Gravity. I've discovered a lot of very interesting sort of they're not anomalies, obviously, but they look like anomalies of balance, balancing things in, in surprising ways. And it's just the path that this particular show took. I think the basic uh, idea is, is a kind of reverse engineering of finding a trick that I could do and then saying, okay, that's the solution. What was the problem? Look at that door. Good dogs. You're very obedient, but you have no curiosity left. You're just obedient. Oh my God. Did you guys see this? Feel the difference? Feel the difference? You were all in going, what, 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 what? That's where I would like an audience to be. Not obedient. Then you can have fun with them. That's when you find out what they want to do and what they know. Most of my creativity is going into teaching others and also to doing directing and coaching. And uh, I have a, a series of principles, eccentric performing principles, that are a pretty good guide for uh, creating and maintaining rapport with the audience and with one's partners, and then, then looking for the comedy in terms of problem solving. One of the main ones is, 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 has become kind of our motto, which is be interested, not interesting. And I think it's probably the major critique that I give when I do coaching sessions. Performers are scared of the audience. The audience is scared of the performer. They, 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 we've got two groups of people. They're terrified of each other. That's kind of the given of the theatrical situation. That, that we hope it doesn't suck idea. And by being interesting, I mean they're, they're, they're looking to the audience for approval and trying to ensure that they laugh and clap when, when it really works better when they are fascinated with what they're doing. And I, I think that's true in life as well, that when we're, we're attracted to people that are, that are fascinated, uh, those are the people that we find fascinating. And that does more to dispel any sense of of anticipatory anxiety. What, what is anticipatory anxiety when it, when it relates to uh, performing? It's, it's this fear of not being interesting. And, and the way around that and a lot of the, the sort of cure for stage fright is, is not to worry if they'll find you interesting, but to find them interesting. A clown is not a thing. Clowning is a series of techniques and attitudes that allow you to solve problems that 
in some sense don't really exist, but we agree that they exist. So in my show, when I can't pick up the hat, of course I can pick it up. But I've said, oh dear. And we all accept that. It's not about costumes, makeups, funny faces, funny voices. It's, it's the attitude to solving the problems that you find along the way to doing your job. Thanks for watching and, and thanks to Brian for putting this whole series together. It's really marvelous. If you're interested in eccentric performing, you can go to avnertheeccentric.com and there you'll find videos and bibliographies and fascinating origami models that you can make and listings for upcoming workshops and shows and even find out how to make a rose out of toilet paper. <laughs>larger context of uh, the universe and everything, everything we're doing is totally ridiculous. If you really think about it, humans are weird. And that weirdness to me is really funny.